Hello and welcome back to my channel, which is dedicated to music, philosophy and art and culture in general. So, um, York Friedrich Hegel and his aesthetics, his views about arts. <laughs> aesthetics views are set forth by him in his lectures on aesthetics and it was complied uh, by his students Heinrich uh, Gustav Hotho in 1835. Uh, so it was written not by Hegel himself, it was just his lectures in Heidelberg University. According to Hegel, art, religion and philosophy have the same, same content and the same generalized principle, maybe. Art is the first form of self-knowledge of an idea or ideal. Uh, Hegel says that it can be used as a game, as a means of obtaining pleasure, uh, and have a pleasant time, decorate our furniture and um, just in, to enjoy life and uh, this art. But in this case it wouldn't be free, uh, but an official subordinate matter, this art. And art, on the other hand, solves the highest aim, uh, the highest aim since it it is put on a par with religion and philosophy, for Hegel it's undoubtful, and is one of the ways of knowing uh, the deepest human interests, the all-encompassing truths of the spirit. Uh, the cornerstone of Hegel's philosophy of art is the concept of truth and ideal. Beauty is truth, and truth in the form of contemplation, in the images of our feelings, in the forms of life in itself. Art is designed to reveal the truth in a sensual form. And in his understanding of the truth, Hegel resembles um, George Foster. George Foster uh, was one of the political and uh, ideological leader of the Jacobin club mm. and uh, he says that uh, he probably will not be mistaken if he takes it for the true that the place of our meeting the meeting of this club uh, or members of this club is sanctified by the name of truth. And he says, we are looking for ways to the truth, we strive to develop it in a pure and genuine form. Um, and it's the goal of our desires and aspirations, it's the final point of our wandering, uh, the element in which we feel at home. Um, he says about all uh, his uh, comrades and his friends and his so-called brothers <laughs> um, embarrassed this club, Jacobin club. So, without it, the life of an animal would be more enviable than ours, more desirable, maybe. Because if, along with reason, we also have an animal existence, then at the same time we know how contemptible this life would be without the slightest noble addition. And it's absolutely according with the Hegel's view, views about philosophy and life and mm, this maybe idealization of the role of art also. And this was recalled by the events of the times of Thermidor, mm, the consulate, the empire, and Hegel's attitude to the Enlightenment was very complicated, to tell the truth. It was very complex, as evidenced um, by his criticism in the phenomenology of the spirit, as you know. And Hegel famously said about the sub substantial content of art at the end of the first part of his 
lectures um, on aesthetics and the true originality for Hegel, uh, true originality of both the artist and the artistic work, artistic creation, lies in the fact that they are animated by the reasonableness um, of the content that is true in itself, true as such. Only in the case when the artist has fully assimilated uh, this objective reason and, and doesn't violate its purity by alien furniture uh, or alien features taken from outside or from within. Uh, only in this case, in the object embodied by him, he also rep reproduces himself. Uh, in his true subjectivity, which strives to be only a living center of an artistic work and um, this artistic work completed in itself. For in all true thinking, creativity and creation, uh, genuine freedom grants the domination to the substantial principle as a force uh, that is at the same time its own power power of subjective thinking and expressing of himself or herself and will itself so that will will as power power of will maybe subjective will uh, so that in the complete reconciliation of subjective freedom and substantial su the substantial principle there is no discord between them so the analyze analyzes of them the analysis of the ideal in its development is mainly devoted uh, to lectures on aesthetics. Hegel's subsequent aesthetics concepts are connected with the ideal or the richness, uh, richness and diversity uh, of world art is considered by Hegel as the development of this idea, main idea of the spirit. Uh, all the, um, depending on the relationship between the idea and its external appearance, um, depending on the development of the ideal of the spirit, um, art forms are also differentiated. When the ideal is still abstract, when the idea has not received proper, uh, proper concreteness, um, proper definition maybe, uh, then the external embodiment of the idea is also abstract. The first form of art is symbolic. Uh, the idea and its appearance here do not yet uh, correspond to each other. According to Hegel, oriental art is completely symbolic. For example, Islamic art, you know, uh, and their um, pain, painting depictions uh, depiction of human beings or animal beings aren't welcome, they are um, forbidden. Uh, in the second form, which Hegel calls classical, the idea receives a complete and completely adequate, adequate embodiment. Uh, the form and content here are in full compliance. Classical art refers to ancient art, uh, Greek uh, classical art. The idea, for example, the image of the Greek gods gets its perfect external expression um, in sculpture, this beautiful sculpture of Greek gods. But here the idea doesn't here yet appear in the form of a higher spiritual idea. Uh, the true idea finds its full realization in the romantic form of art, medieval art, and modern art, modern for Hegel's uh, time, of course. Uh, the spirit is free, here conquers matter, nature, and from the plastic classical art turns into the spiritual romantic and painting, music and poetry come to the fore. The complete correspondence of the idea and appearance achieved in classical art is again violated here. The sensuous, sensuous form 
is already becoming insufficient um, for the embodiment of an idea that has developed um, uh, and conquered nature. Conquered nature in romantic art, the external material becomes only a sign, only a sign of this idea of this spirit. And when does the third stage of art? And Hegel has no clear answer to this question, but we should remember his very complicated attention to the Enlightenment. And by the way, the beginning of a serious study of the arts um, and its classification as such uh, was laid also by Hegel. Uh, his aesthetics um, has a great scientific uh, importance and the concept of dividing uh, art into types is still considered authoritative and for nowadays. Hegel identified five arts – architecture, sculpture, painting, music, literature and, uh, as you know, Schelling's uh, classification in, in Schelling's classification, plastic arts uh, were bo the both sculpture and architecture, and for Hegel, they are also they are already different arts. Uh, so subsequently, scientists added later dance and pantomime to them, and in the twentieth century. Stayed uh, directing as an art of creating a chain of mise en scène in theatre and in cinema. In the last mentioned uh, types of art, the material carriers of imaginary of imagery are spatial compositions um, that replace each other. Um, in time and in space, of course. <laughs> On the basis of content, Hegel divided all types of art into two groups – visual and uh, expressive – visual arts and expressive arts. And the first group includes sculpture, painting, pantomime, um, literature designed to depict objects and um, phenomena of life and people. Uh, the second group of arts includes music, architecture, ornament, dance and uh, maybe in 20th century abstract painting, I think so, which generalized experiences, moods and ideas and world views of the individual, of the subject. So, the types of art listed by Hegel are called simple or single component and com more complicated, yeah, since they rely on one material carrier or in many material carriers. And uh, although there is already a question with the perceiving subject, so um, art, in addition, art can be performing, uh, like music or dance or acting and uh, non-performing and um, the sculpture is already ready uh, for our um, contemplation and doesn't require any performer, any actor. Uh, but is the contemplative subject himself the performer or interpretator? I think so. But it's the question of 20th century. So, thank you for your attention and see you in the next video. Good to you and bye.